Here we are today with Keith Hansen at the Wildlife Gallery and Studio. Good morning, Keith. Good morning, welcome. Glad you guys could make it. You've entered my realm, the Wildlife Gallery and Studio, and as the name suggests, uh, it's both a gallery where uh, people can come and uh, view uh, the artwork that I've portrayed, and it's also a studio where I do all of my illustrating. Tell me, what's going on in the bird world these days? Well, uh, all the bird watchers are getting fired up because all the excitement's about to begin. We all kind of look forward to fall migration. And of course, we have spring migration in uh, April, May, and June. But fall, uh, you know, is is so much more um, uh, abundant with birds because all of the chicks, the newly hatched birds, are are going to be migrating. And so, at this time of year, thing bird watchers and the birds are getting really fired up to make their migration to points further south. So have you been hearing of any unusual sightings uh, for any particular reason this year? Well, it's interesting that you should ask that because usually the more unusual species, um, because they're lost and unusual, they usually take longer to arrive here. But, uh, you know, meaning late September, early October. But there has been a, f a f kind of a a wave of interesting species that have come through in the last couple weeks. A fellow ornithologist here in town, Peter Pyle, found an incredibly rare bird that's only been seen once ever on the Bolinas Lagoon. It's a bird called a bar-tailed godwit. It's a, it's a large shorebird, about this big, that breeds on the north slope of Alaska and the north slope of Russia and then migrates all the way from the north slope of Alaska all the way to New Zealand. So that bird got on the wrong side of the Pacific Ocean and instead of being in Korea or Japan on its way south was found on the Bolinas Lagoon and many hundreds of people uh, have uh, come to look for this bird and uh, the lucky few uh, have been able to see it and add it to their list. That's just one of many species that's shown up recently. Keith, how do these birds get disoriented? Well, if you can imagine, you're a bird coming from, say, Alaska or British Columbia. You were hatched in the north, and you have to make your way towards the cloud forests of, say, Guatemala, Central America, or even South America. So these birds are southbound, and most species migrate at night. They leave the earth at about 10 to 11 o'clock in the evening, and they get to a very high altitude, thousands of feet above the earth, and they navigate by the stars. These birds are born with an innate map of the heavens in their brain. So they follow certain series of stars, and oftentimes that will mean that they will drift high above a complete cloud layer that so frequently carpets the earth in Marin County during the fall. In August, September, October, November, oftentimes there'll be complete cloud cover that will carpet the earth and the birds can't see the earth or the ocean and they're concentrating on the stars. Well, seven, eight in the morning, the sun comes up, the birds drop below the clouds and they realize, oh my gosh, I'm out over the ocean. I'm a sparrow. I need a log to sit on or a tree to go to. And so these birds will do everything they can to try and get to the nearest point of land. It might be a ship offshore, it might be the Farallon Islands, it might be the tip of Point Reyes, or it might be Bolinas or anywhere along the coast. And it's those days, it's 9, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning is when those birds make landfall and uh, our, our lives are enriched by their presence. But before we talk about the bar-tailed godwit, let me introduce to you the marbled godwit. Marbled godwits are a very common bird that you see here on the ocean, and they're um, identified by their very warm cinnamon rusty coloration. On the contrary, the bar-tailed godwit, this bird here, here it is in breeding plumage, and then here's a juvenile, like this bird that was found in Bolinas is a very checkered. So they're very similar looking to the marbled godwit, but they've got a bold eye line and they've got a pale rump patch. That's the key feature. Let's look at this bird's range a little bit. Here's obviously the Pacific Ocean with Australia on the left, Asia and Alaska and Russia in the north, North America and South America. The bar-tailed godwit spends the winter in New Zealand and Australia, mostly northern New Zealand. When it comes time to migrate north, they fly in a northwesterly direction all the way to the Yellow Sea in China, where they regroup and feed and uh, build up more fat reserves to finish the next leg of their trip, which takes them over Japan, over the Koreas, all the way up Kanchapka to the very northern slope of Alaska and Russia. The birds then breed there, make their nest, raise their chicks, and a few years ago, a Point Reyes Bird Observatory biologist, with, a, with the help of a radio transmitter, recorded 
the migration of a bar-tailed godwit that flew from here in the Aleutians seven days straight, non-stop, seven days flight, back to New Zealand. So that had never been recorded before. So as you can tell, this bird has a massive flight from the bottom of the earth to the top and back every year. That sounds like a truly miraculous journey and must be kind of a miracle that the bird can have enough energy and stamina to go such a distance that must have even impressed you. Well, let me tell you, when they leave New Zealand, they're probably bloated like a big fat pig and they can probably hardly even fly. They're so fat. And by the time they get to China, they're probably so tapped out and skinny and emaciated and have probably burnt most, if not all of their fat reserves. And if they don't make landfall by then, they'll even start to burn muscle tissue and stuff. So they really need to get, get to land to feed, to re build up all those fat reserves. Well, Keith, thank you so much for sharing uh, such a miracle of the bird life. Oh, you're welcome. It's been my pleasure.